Where did I, oh, here's one I want to get to. It's 2021. Do you really need a Bronze Age myth to tell you not to steal, kill, etc.? I'm assuming you're referring to the Bible. I've known this my whole life because we evolved as a social ape species. Crazed old man. Well, you got the correct name. Well, crazed old man, let me ask you a question. Do apes steal from each other? Is it okay if an ape steals from another ape? What if in the zoo, what if one of the apes killed another ape? Would the other apes get together and have a trial and convict him and hang him or shoot him or something? <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. You may, have, you may have evolved from an ape. I don't know, crazed old man. Looking at the picture, I'll give it 50-50. <laughs> uh, anyway, here's some comments on David. Crazed old man comments quite often on our YouTube channel. <clears throat> Good name for you, by the way. <clears throat> Many strata are not dated from fossils. Relative dates of strata, whether layers are older or younger than others, crazed old man, listen carefully. How could a layer be a different age than another layer? Is it coming from outer space? Stop and think. How could any of the layers be different ages? If you shake up a jar of sand, gravel, and mud, and water, it'll settle into layers in seconds. And all the layers are the same age. If you shuffle a deck of cards, one of them ends up on top. But they're all the same age. There's no such thing as a geologic column. Think about it. <sighs> Gee. Let's see. <clears throat> Some strata are dated absolutely mm, with radiometric dating. You need to watch my video seven for more on that. <clears throat> Human ape. Human ape. Wow. Do you really need a storybook to tell you how to live? Well, human ape. Do you, do you really believe that? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we all, I think I need a book to tell me how to fix things on my car called an owner's manual. Don't you get a, you know, don't you get a little owner's manual when you buy a watch? I mean, most things that are complicated need some kind of little instruction manual. If you bought a, a coffee pot, I bet there came with a little instruction manual telling how to run it. Right. So I think humans are very complex and we need an instruction manual. <clears throat> and I think God gave us that in his word. If you don't want to follow it, great. I do. I think it's true. I think it's God's word. OK, so, yeah, it tells you how to live. All right. Let's see. Do you actually believe these debates are creating a whole new group of creationists? They're not. Science rolls on regardless. Well, Mia, Mina, a lot of people, I think, are coming over to the creationist viewpoint because of these debates. You should get the comments that we get. Yeah. Uh, Jehovah Jones writes in, a bunch of ages are listed in the Bible, historically or scientifically. How do you know they're true? How do you know Abe Lincoln was president? Huh? How do you know? Did you see him? <laughs> Come on. There's all kinds of recorded history. Some of it stretched. Some of it fine. Some of it, I don't, you have to decide what are you going to believe? You're going to believe you came from a rock? Okay. Who still literally believes in the Middle Eastern mythology of 20 in 2021? Well, Dr. Z uh, Zayas, I'm assuming you're trying to poke at the Bible here. I still believe in it, but it's not mythology. It's all scientific fact. God created the world in six days. It's the only way it works. You know, plants breathe in CO2 and give off oxygen. Animals breathe in oxygen, give off CO2. How long did one last without the other? Hmm? Which evolved first, the male or the female? Did they find each other right away? Think about it. Which evolved first, the ability to have children or the desire to have children? Or the equipment to have children? Which evolved first? We can go all day on this if you want. Anyway, let's see. Deep down, creationists realize they will never win factual arguments with science, the hyena kind. Now, that's an excellent name you've chosen. Uh, <clears throat> I would suggest you come to our Big Bang Bible Believers Baptist Big Bang Blowout coming up in less than three weeks. Right here, Dinosaur Adventure Land. Come on down. In the new church, right? Chris, we'll be in the new church. Yep. You guys working like mad in there? I got to get updated pictures of the floor. Is it all lacquered? It's all lacquered now. Oh, man. Okay. I'll get up in the balcony up there and take some pictures of that. That's going to be cool. Tomorrow when all the lights are bright. Okay. Let's see. So you guys, a hyena kind and Dr. Zace, come on down. You can be part of the evolution crew that defends the religion that we all came from a rock and will give you equal time 
and, and treat you like royalty on Thanksgiving Day, feed you, all that kind of stuff. Forget the argument on Thanksgiving Day. Day before, though, we're going to duke them out. All right. <clears throat> let's see. All, let's see. There are no such thing as evolutionists. The Egyptians saw no global floods. Yet. There are geologists, biologists, geneticists that all accept evolution. Really? So you disagree with Hoven on some things, of course. Okay, now, I accept the fact that cows can jump. Does anybody else accept that fact? Would you like some, demo, some evidence? They have rodeo stuff where they make them jump over. They can't jump very far, but they can jump, and they don't like it probably, but they, cows can jump, all right? I accept the fact that cows can jump. The evidence for this fact is overwhelming, and experiments can be performed to prove this fact, okay? No question. You ever seen a cow jump? You've been raised around here for what? Since, how long have you been around here? A long time. Yeah. Cows can jump. Therefore, since I accept the fact that cows can jump, which proves beyond reasonable doubt that given enough time, a cow could jump over the moon. W would that help some of you evolutionists understand the stupid logic you are following? Yes, we can see variations within the kind. Therefore, everything's related. Stop and think. Just because a cow can jump, and a I bet you could train a cow to jump higher. I bet you could take it to the gym, make it work out, make it lose some weight, and you know, get cattle prod behind it, make it really jump, okay? But I doubt you'd ever get one to jump over the moon, guys. It's a fairy tale. Fairy tale. Uh, my room writes in, I'll blame the victims of the cult. What on earth are you talking about, blind superstition? Typical cult. Blame the victims of the cult. I don't know. Okay, my room writes in, Kent is innocent, We, as we plainly can hear from the recording. I, I thought it was very plain. I was there. I know. I held my cool <laughs> the whole time. So according to science, you don't exist, and everything is not here. And the Big Bang is scientific, so by extension, science proves none facts like evolution. How many scientific papers on evolution have you read to make your educated opinion? This is the argument. How many, how many papers are there against Islam in Muslim countries? How many papers are there against communism in China? You guys, America is just as bad when it comes to protecting the sacred cow of evolution. Barney Bonobo, Bonobo Bono, the long O, short O, Bonobo Bonobo. Anyway, there are no such things as evolutionists. There are geologists, geneticists, biologists, all of whom independently come to the same conclusions. You think so? I bet all the teachers in China have all come to the same conclusion that communism is good. Haven't they? I bet all the teachers in Muslim countries have all come to the same conclusion. Muhammad was a prophet and, and Islam is good. Haven't they all come to that same conclusion? Absolutely. What happens if you don't come to that conclusion? They'll cut, your head off. They'll cut your head off. They're wiping out the elephants with big tusks. They're not evolving at all, guys. I don't know how you can be so dumb to not see that. Kent just admitted that the tusks of elephants are getting shorter with time through natural selection. No, this is artificial selection. This is people killing them off, okay? Blind superstition. Why doesn't this work with the length of the trunk? It got longer through time as well. How do you know that? Where on earth is the evidence of the trunk getting longer besides your lines you do on paper? Same exact evolutionary process, natural selection. Blind superstition. Tusks are derived from the incisor teeth. Blind superstition. You are dreaming. You made that up. Nobody with a brain, could prove any such thing. You just make a statement. You think the incisor teeth could grow into a tusk. You Think about that. A trunk is derived from the nose. Oh, really? The elephant has more muscles in his trunk than we have in our body, like 10 times more, 8 times more, whatever it is. How many muscles do you have in your nose, Mr. Blind Superstition? Can you pick up something with your nose like an elephant does? They're exactly the same. You think an elephant's trunk is exactly the same as a nose. You need help, son. You need to take an anatomy class, a biology. You can take a class, first take a class in common sense, okay? Shorter tusks and longer tusks, trunks evolve through natural selection. You, you can believe that all you want, but that's baloney. Okay, that's all the questions I have here. Let's see. Burnaby writes in. So you don't think lava flow happens at different times? Yeah. If the rock melts in a volcano, comes out and cools down again, it's still the same age. Duh. Am I missing something here? I, okay. 
You don't think lava flows happen at different times? Oh, yeah, they certainly do. Sedimentary layers have been laid down through billions of years of history by sediment in different depositional environments. Well, I disagree with the billions of years, but I think sedimentaries are laid, sediment, sedimentary layers are laid down at different times. But it's the same rock. Got melted, dissolved in the water or whatever, and laid down to sediment. How can it be a different age? Think about it. Okay. You definitely have no concept of deep time. But neither do you, blind superstition. Deep time, billions of years. The guy today was saying, yeah, oh, billions of years will solve all that. I said, wait, wait, wait. The earth is spinning. I think most folks agree with that. We've got a few folks who think it's flat. They're wrong, by the way. But the earth is spinning about 1,046 or 1,047.2 or something in miles per hour at the equator, depending upon your altitude. Okay. The earth is spinning, but the earth is slowing down. It's observable. Just type in leap second. Why do we have to have a leap second? Because the earth is slowing down. Now stop and think. If the earth is slowing down a thousandth of a second every day, which would you to be expected? A spinning object should be slowing down due to tidal friction, wind friction, gravitational pull of the moon, gravitational lag, all kinds of things. The earth is slowing down. Okay. Go back billions of years. And what would that do? That would make it be spinning really, really, really fast, like flatten out, flatten like a Frisbee. Okay. The sun is burning up about 5 million tons of fuel every second. Go back in time and add 5 million tons to the sun per second. Do that for a million years or a billion years. How much would the sun weigh? Would that upset the gravitational pull and suck all the planets in? Or did all nine planets just happen to be in balance with this shrinking and uh, diminishing weight of the sun? Sun is shrinking five feet an hour. There are hundreds of scientific indicators this earth cannot be billions of years old. I cover them on seminar part one, the age of the earth. I'd suggest you watch that. I give maybe 30 or 40 of them there, but there are hundreds that say, look, you might want the earth to be billions of years old and you might need it for your theory, but it's not logical. It can't happen. SpongeBob, stand up there, but okay. Deep time, uh, blind superstition, you have no concept of deep time and what that would do to many parameters in the world. You think all the planets been circling this sun for deep time, billions of years, none of them drifted off. You think the moon, all, I cut, watch video number one. Okay, let's see. D Drayton writes in, your definition of verified history is askew. We have history of mankind for hundreds of thousands of years. Drayton, where did you learn that? Go sue your teacher for teaching you stupid stuff. We do not have any such history like that, okay? Drayton, where is evidence of a post-flood ice age around two to 3,000 BC? It doesn't exist. Well, Drayton, you could, how many have ever seen glacial grooves? I should have put pictures in here. Ice that goes scooting across the countryside will scratch out the rock. Just Google glacial grooves. They're all over. Clear down to Kansas City, Missouri. There definitely was an ice age. I think it happened simultaneous with the flood, and that much ice would take 500 years to melt back. If you had giant ice caps on the planet, clear down to Kansas City, Missouri, right here, if the ice caps were huge, that's going to make the oceans smaller because a bunch of the water is frozen and stuck at the North and South Pole. It would take a few hundred years for that to melt. Well, if the oceans were smaller, that makes the continents bigger. All the continents have a continental shelf. You Off the coast of Florida, you got to go out what, a couple hundred miles before it gets 200 feet deep. 200 feet. What's that, from here to my house? So... I think after the flood, the continents were lar much larger and all connected. The kangaroos could walk to Australia. Oh, Google, just get a Google Maps. Look at uh, Indonesia. All this water around here is, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet deep. The width of this room. You don't have to lower the oceans much to connect Australia. So everything was the English Channel that they had a hard time crossing in, you know, the World War II. It's like 100 feet deep. That's it. So I think you really need to look at the continental shelf. Well, my video is six. I cover all that. Archibald writes in, just because you keep proclaiming it doesn't make it true. Now, that's a good point, Archibald. You are correct. It's also true for evolution. You keep proclaiming that a mosquito and a whale have a common ancestor and came from a rock, which came from a dot of nothing exploding. You can proclaim that all you want. That doesn't make it true either. The Bible's been disproven by science and history. Uh, would you be specific? What exactly has been disproven, Archibald? I'll debate you anytime. Call 855-BIG-DINO. Hey, uh, uh, be alert for Archibald calling in, and you schedule a debate. Okay? okay? Jeff, I recently began watching your Woe series. It changed my view of the rapture. 
Now I have to get your book so I can study this deeper. Well, thank you, Jeff. I agree. Uh, Dracula's dog. Why don't you study how to save our beautiful earth instead of wallowing in despair? Ice canopy dream. Watch the Bill Ludlow, King Crocoduck, and Herman Mays debates, too, where Kent got obliterated. Well, tell Bill Ludlow, King Crocoduck, and Herman to come November 24th to Dinosaur Adventureland. We will have a debate. We'll take them all on the same time. Here's the rules. One topic at a time. No interrupting. I don't care which one of them answers the question. I want the atheist to go first. What's the best evidence for evolution? I will then respond. Then the next, and which one of them talks, I don't care. If they got six minutes and each of them wants to take two minutes of it, that's fine. No interrupting. No cursing or profanity. And one topic at a time. Simple. Take them all on. Come on, guys. Bring it down. Ice canopy. All biological systems evolved incrementally through a combination of natural selection and genetic drift. They weren't magically created by a genie. Ice canopy dreams, you are dreaming. All Biological systems involved incrementally. You know, you have probably 12 systems in your body, major systems, a skeletal system, a reproductive system, a nervous system, a balance system, a digestive system. You think that system evolved incrementally. So you got your mouth where you could take food in first, and millions of years later, you got a way to get rid of it at the other end. I think you probably need both in the same, you know, same within a couple of days of each other. <laughs> evolved incrementally. You guys are absolute idiots. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that would work. Okay. Mechanisms for abiogenesis and Big Bang are not settled. Evolution, though, is a fact. This guy's name is Squeal Like a Creationist. Evolution, though, is a fact with a mountain of evidence supporting it. Okay, Squeal. I think you're mistaken, okay? What has ever been demonstrated about any animal producing something in its kind? Has any farmer ever seen a cow produce a non-cow, a dog produce a non-dog, plant corn and cups come something other than corn? The Bible said they'll bring forth after their kind 20 times in the first seven chapters. I think that's all that's ever happened. Evolution is not a fact. It's not even a good theory. It's a religious belief. You believe mosquitoes and whales have a common ancestor. A mountain of evidence. Well, come November 24th, squeal, and give me the best one you've got. We're going to take the three top evidences for evolution and have a debate right here at Dinosaur Adventure Land. No such thing as intelligent design. The hyena kind. <laughs> Good name. <clears throat> no such thing as intelligent design. Even things made by humans are made by natural processes. What are you smoking, son? Would you say this was made by natural processes, this microphone? No, it requires intelligence. Definitely. You, you work on these kind of things. It requires, there's a lot of complicated stuff in here. It, even things made by humans are made by natural processes. Go watch how anything is assembled from a, a play toy to a, to a Corvette. Yep. They say that. Right, and just for him to say that doesn't mean it's true. An omnipotent and ben omnibenevolent deity or deities would not create organisms with the perceived suboptimal design that occur in nature. What exactly, 8,800-year-old man, what exact, exactly is suboptimal design? You think that because we see some creatures today that have some flaws, okay, therefore there's no designer. Well, keep in mind, you're not looking at the original. You're looking at a copy off 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 a copy. We're lucky we can walk and talk and think at all. And you think how many times that gene code's been copied. Uh, blind superstition, writes it. Let your kids form their own worldviews and quit, stunt, quit stunting their critical thinking. Now, blind superstition, I'm going to guess that you believe in evolution, and you're trying to say kids should not be taught creation. You are the one stunting people's critical thinking skills. Why don't we show kids both sides? Kids, some people think Grand Canyon formed slowly. Some people think it formed quickly. 
Here's the evidence for both, kids. What do you think? You decide. Hey, kids, some people think the Earth is billions of years old. Some people think it's 6,000 years old. Let's talk about this. The Earth is slowing down in its spin. Oh, that's going to put a time limit. The moon is getting further away. Hmm, that'll put a time limit. The sun is burning up its fuel. Hmm, that puts a time limit, doesn't it? Yeah. There are all kinds of... Watch my video number one, Creation Seminar Series. I give 30 different scientific indicators that can't be old. Why don't you share those with the kids in public school? At least if you really mean, let's see, let your kids form their own worldview. Do you really mean that, blind superstition? Well, then make all the kids in school watch my video series and say, wow, that's the evidence for creation. Hmm. Let me compare that with what they're telling me about evolution. Don't you think they should form their own worldview? I don't believe you believe that for a second. You want to indoctrinate them with your worldview. Okay. Wolf Spider. Dahmer listened to Kent and was converted. Question mark. Interesting. That's what Dahmer said. We donate our videotapes to prisons, always have. And he watched my videos in prison and gave his heart to the Lord. Okay. Uh, now, he still had to pay his debt to society. That's different, okay? But his debt to God was paid by Jesus Christ. Ladies, man, this is real science. I agree. Wolf spider, real pseudoscience. Oh, wolf spider, come on, be specific now. What do we teach? How many lessons do you teach in the science center? Too many to count. Oh, too many to count, a bunch. It's real science around here. Yeah, we like science, okay? Evolution's not part of it. Kent is a wealth of knowledge. I'm so sorry for what's been done to him. Evil has tried many ways to shut him up and extinguish his light. He has more dad jokes than anyone else. Well, we've certainly had our share of pressure and tr tr trouble and problems. Uh, we've had a couple of main people who work, uh, not they don't work in our ministry, but they, we trust them for uh, for vending, you know, to take care of things. And one of them got arrested the other day. And, you know, he's not on staff here, but he's, you know. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> what do you do? Go on and serve God, you know. Uh, it's all over the news. Uh, let's see. I didn't do it though. Let's see. But you know, he works for, I don't know, 10 or 15 different companies and we're one of them. Okay. Blind superstition. Try to live in reality sometime. I, I try that all the time. Blind superstition writes, the theory of evolution no longer requires Darwin. It has incorporated many of his ideas, but has progressed far beyond. You act like Darwin encompasses the entire theory and that displays your lack of understanding. Well, blind superstition. There is no evidence at all for evolution, other than variations within the same kind. 1,100 varieties of bats came from a bat. Okay, 7,500 varieties of apple might have come from an apple. That's all we've ever seen. You guys are blind. And okay, I wrote, wow, you chose the perfect name for yourself, blind superstition. Hyena writes it. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a hypothetical cognitive bias stating that people with low ability at a task overestimate their own ability. In short, those who are incompetent have little insight into their incompetence. Kent is a textbook example. Right away, what? Dunning-Kruger. They have incredible high confidence but very little wisdom. See the chart there? They know nearly nothing. But if a person learns a lot and their wisdom increases, and then their confidence level can increase. It's one thing to have high confidence and be stupid. It's another thing to have high confidence and know what you're talking about. It's you evolutionists that have the Dunning-Kruger effect. You think you know everything is related, and there is no you have high confidence in that, but no wisdom at all. None. It amazes me, the Dunning-Kruger. Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, blind super. I don't know how many accounts. These guys, we shut down one account or ban them, and they come back with another one. They have nothing else to do. Wait, just wait in the basement until Mama calls them for supper. Yeah, probably never seen breakfast in their life, but okay. Let's see. Cute one writes in, Kent will debate you on evolution, not evolution versus creation. He debunks evolution without needing to mention creation. So now that means you will debate him if creation is not mentioned. I think you will find another excuse, or will you debate Kent? Come on, blind superstition. Okay. If you notice, Kent doesn't want to debate creationism because there's no actual scientific evidence. I'd be glad to debate creation, but... Uh, it's not required. I'm not asking everybody to pay for it to be taught. The burden of proof, not on me. They keep trying to shift the burden of proof. You guys demand that we all teach in these textbooks that your religion be taught. Where's the evidence? I think the whole topic of origin should be not discussed. 
in public school. You can teach the kids all the anatomy, boys and girls, this is the deltoid, the biceps, the triceps, the flexors, the extenders, the, you know, you can teach them all the muscles, all the bones, and never mention how it got there. Because no matter which mention you give, evolution or creation, you're going to make somebody mad. Just ignore the topic of origins. Learn the muscles, learn the bones. You're a nurse. You think there's any doctor in the world that has to worry about evolution when he's doing surgery, or does he just need to know his anatomy? Just better know where you're cutting, right? Duh. <laughs> okay. Cute one. So if I set it up only about evolution, would you debate him? Come on, blind stupidation. Answer the question for the lady, okay? Uh, evolution is a scientific theory, and facts are not debatable. I agree. Facts are not debatable. Evolution has no facts to back it up. I wouldn't reduce myself as a scientist to debate a pseudoscientist. Oh, here we go. Cute way out, isn't it? Okay. I will stick to what I'm doing. Thanks for the offer. Okay. Okay. There's a reason why kids learn astronomy, not astrology in school. The freakster said, I agree. We should teach astronomy in school. I agree. Nobody questions the fact that the earth orbits the sun. I don't question that either. We don't teach kids that some people believe otherwise. Oh, I don't know about that. It's okay to teach there's other theories, you know, but to, to, to teach why it's not true, okay? They used to teach big rocks fall faster than little rocks. That was taught for a long time. So Galileo said, let's test it. He went up on the Leaning Tower of Pisa, got a cannonball and a BB, dropped them off, hit the ground same time. He proved something that, wrong that they'd been teaching for a long time as truth, and it wasn't true. So science can, certainly can be wrong, but the, the Earth does orbit the sun, okay? And it is round, and it spins, okay? Snodgrass writes in, you, no, you are an astronomical distance from the truth. You believe literal in Adam and Eve. Well, it doesn't make you distant from the truth, Snodgrass. That might make, my, my story might be true. But see, we admit we believe in the Bible. We believe the evolution. We believe the, the uh, creation story. And we, we admit it's a religious belief. You guys won't admit yours is a religion. You believe a rock got rained on and turned to soup and came alive. That's your, it's, but you want us to pay for that to be taught. Go start a private school. Teach that to any moron dumb enough to want to learn that. Okay. 